The Wealth of Some Nations, Section, Social Imperialist Marxism in France. Meanwhile, due to their abject failure to show genuine solidarity with anti-colonial movements throughout the French Empire, and the refusal of communist union organizers to approach workers with anti-imperialism as opposed to purely, quote, bread and butter economic issues. Common turn leaders denounced the leaders of the French Communist Party, PCF, as, quote, incorrigible social democrats, and the party's Algerian members as, quote, possibly excellent Frenchmen, but very indifferent communists, end quote. Given the minority position of the working class in the Third Republic, 1870 to 1940, and the dependence of Marseille on colonial trade and Lyon on raw silk imports from Indochina, it was little wonder that French socialists, quote, pulled their punches when it came to criticizing France's role in the underdeveloped countries. One of the more militant members of the SFIO and a member of their Commission on Colonial Affairs, Daniel Guérin observed that the PCF, especially in the Popular Front period, sought to preserve France's colonial empire for fear that its disillusion would favor the fascist enemies of both France and the USSR. Its rhetoric, in fact, dovetailed with that of the SFIO, which regularly denounced national liberation movements in the colonies as fascist and racist. However, at discussions held in Paris in August 1936 with the Third Reich's finance minister, Hjalmar Schacht, the leader of France's Popular Front government, Leon Blum, insisted on his willingness to meet Nazi demands for a redistribution of the colonies. Their inhabitants, presumably, were to be civilized, according to the tender mercies of openly genocidal and racist fascist German imperialism. Overall, for the French left, whereas capital export to the colonies was periodically criticized as draining the metropolis of needed investment, as were the deleterious effects of military conscription upon the French working class. Colonial policy per se was not consistently denounced, nor was national self-determination upheld as the best solution for its associated problems. In her autobiography, Feminist philosopher Simone de Beauvoir wrote about the PCS social chauvinism. Beginning of long quote. The PCF made no effort to combat the racism of the French workers, who considered the 400,000 North Africans settled in France as both intruders doing them out of jobs and as a sub-proletariat worthy only of contempt. What is certain is that by June 1955, all resistance to the war had ceased. The entire population of the country, workers, employees, farmers, and professional people, civilians and soldiers, were caught up in a great tide of chauvinism and racism. Provided it was properly costumed for them, the people of France were prepared to accept this war with a light heart. I was not at all upset when the ultras demonstrated. They were just ultras. What did appall me was to see the vast majority of the French people turn chauvinist and to realize the depth of their racist attitude. I was even more stupefied and saddened when I learned with what docility the youth soldiers sent to Algeria became accomplices in the methods of pacification. End of long quote. Likewise, the eminent French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre accused the PCF of tailing the Socialist Party, which was the main force behind prosecuting the war on Algeria of the 1950s and 60s. In an interview, Sartre suggested that colonialism to some extent protected the French working class from unemployment and immiseration, allowing it to enjoy a higher standard of living than it would in its absence. He also suggested that colonialism fostered a political collusion between the metropolitan working class and the imperialist bourgeoisie and un certain paternalisme de la classe au voie envers le subproletariat, a certain paternalism of the working class towards the subproletariat. Sartre also considered that the 
sewer exploitation. Super exploitation of Algerians forced many to seek work in France, where French workers perceived them as competitors for jobs. The PCF, in relative terms, embodying the most anti-imperialist sentiments of the French working class, quote, tempered its anti-colonialism in order to establish its credentials as a patriotic party, and thus declared in January 1944 that the French people, with its metropolitan and overseas territories, is, quote, one and indivisible, end quote. The PCF remembered its anti-colonialism only when in opposition and at odds with the Socialist Party, the French section of the workers, SFIO, that is, before 1936. Between 1939 and 41, and after 1947. The SFIO, meanwhile, justified its hostility towards the Vietnamese national liberation struggle with the excuse that it went against the principles of internationalism. Indeed, at its 1944 Congress, Vietnamese, though not French, nationalism was stigmatized as an ideology which, quote, would keep the overseas peoples in the grip of backward feudalism or agitators in the pay of foreign powers, end quote, presumably Soviet. And at the 1947 Congress, as a straightforwardly reactionary creed. The, quote, national colonial consensus, pervading virtually the entire French polity, was built up through the colonialist campaigns of the later part of the 19th century. In spite of militant demonstrations from 1917 onwards against the war and against conquest and intervention in Russia, the early absorption of the labor movement in the colonialist bloc was further consolidated after the First World War. Moreover, although the PCF was less conservative around the issue of colonialism and launched quite a vigorous campaign in 1925 against Spain and France's war against the Berbers of the Rif Mountains in Morocco, quote, the PCF's policy remained one of militant liberalism until the end of the French Empire, end quote from Wall. Within the Labour and Socialist International, the French Socialist Movement constituted the colonialist right wing, insisting on assimilation to French state structures as the path to the emancipation of France's colonies. The Popular Front government, lasting from 1936 to 38, and including the PCF, the SFIO, and the Radical Party, actually strengthened the grip of colonial conservatism on the labor movement and ensured the enduring continuity of left and right on the issue. Even after the Second World War, the SFIO and the PCF persisted in their nationalist, colonialist positions vis-à-vis -vis Algeria and Indochina. Thus, in 1963, chairman of the Communist Party of China, Mao Zedong, was forced to conclude, quote, For the past ten years and more, the leaders of the French Communist Party have followed the colonial policy of the French imperialists, and served as an appendage of French monopoly capital. End quote. As noted, during that period, the French Socialist Party and government was the main force behind the violent repression of the national liberation movement in Algeria, while the PCF simply tailed it, opportunistically divaricating when it came to whether independence should be granted, and vocally opposing Algeria's FLN, Front de Libération Nationale. The PCF was quite realistically concerned that it would lose the support of the patriotic French workers if it came out as a genuinely internationalist party. To its partial credit, the PCF did condemn the mass torture that French imperialism was using to terrorize Algeria into submission. Moreover, after the rout of French occupying forces in Vietnam at Dien Bien Phu, the PCF became more vocal in its opposition to colonialism, with its perspective best summarized as, quote, quit while the going is good. It would be wrong, however, to single out the Leninist parties of the far left for their ideological and organizational capitulation to the class interests of Europe's metropolitan labor aristocracy. 
their Trotskyist opponents operated as the militant wing of imperialist social democracy and were historically even more Eurocentric than the pro-Soviet parties. End of section.